Kenya, whenever you're ready to um, go live, we're ready. Houston Public Works is responsible for the daily tasks you may take for granted. You may not notice us, but we work around the clock to support you. We are the foundation for life in Houston. Houston Water distributes enough fresh water to fill the Astrodome four times a day. Transportation and drainage operations handle 16,000 miles of streets. Over a million signs and street names and thousands of drains. Houston Permitting Center regulates hundreds of projects so you can work, play, and live safely. Customer account services ensures 2.1 million people have access to safe drinking water with efficiency, accuracy, and flexibility. Capital Projects manages the critical improvements that make Houston better every single day. Houston is always moving towards growth, innovation, and progress. We are the largest, most diverse public works organization in the country. We are one team with one purpose. Together, we create a strong foundation for Houston to thrive. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Houston Public Works Professional Service Forecast Meeting. My name is Cheryl Harris, and I'm your Selections Administrator for the Professional Services. Next slide. I want to open up with Houston Public Works Purpose and Five to Thrive. Together, we create a strong foundation for Houston to thrive, and our five to thrive values are respect, ownership, communication, integrity, and teamwork. I do want to put emphasis on together, and together also includes our consultant partnerships in creating that strong foundation for Houston to thrive. Next slide. Now for the bragging rights for Houston Public Works. As you can see, we have a lot of asset and infrastructure that we repair, maintain, reconstruct, rehab. And it is a very important that we uh, partner with our consulting firm to help us achieve all of those things. We're also one of the largest uh, credited 
public works in the country. So that's also a bragging right for us. At Houston Public Works, we have five service line, capital projects, custom account service, Houston Permitting Center, Houston Water, and transportation and drainage operation. Now I would like to introduce Michael Loretti, the Director of Capital Projects, that will say a few remarks. Hello everybody, thank you for being with us today. On behalf of the Director of Public Works, Carol Haddock, uh, welcome you to this meeting and uh, really happy for the great interest in this. Um, and Cheryl is absolutely correct. We see the consulting community as an extension of our staff, so our partners. Without you, we cannot be successful. Uh, so the last uh, round of FY22, there were 39 selections, and uh, just want to tell you a little bit of statistics. Uh, prime and subtotal applications, individual firms were uh, about 315. Out of that, we have made great stride to award to 125 prime and subcontractors. So we need you and we really are grateful for the high interest to work with us. Uh, and so one of the things that we always point out to, to our staff and myself and everyone else within Public Works is uh, we want to be the agency of choice when it comes to consultants that you are willing to provide our talents, your talents to us. Uh, and we constantly work on that and uh, please continue to do so. Thank you. And I'll just pass it along to Cheryl again. Thank you, Michael. All right, so now let's get started with the meeting. I do want to introduce um, the professional service team selection team that assists me in the RFQ process. On my team of the administrative support, I have Lauren Tadlock, and Tasha Me Love. In our technical support, we have Darian Hooks and Jeff Admugalata. Thank you. I do want to say please hold all questions until the end of the presentation. That is when the QA session will begin, and because answers may be in the presentation. Here's the agenda. Let's talk about it. We'll go over the forecast overview for the FY2023 cycle. And then, of course, at the end will be the, your time to ask your questions and get answers from the uh, project team. Next slide. I would like to start with the infrastructure design projects that uh, are forecasted. And for that, I want to introduce Juan Chavera. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, for infrastructure delivery line, which is a delivery line under the capital project service line, uh, for this ground, we only have two projects which we're going to advertise uh, RFQs for. And so the first one is Antoine, Antoine Drive, and I want to go over some of those details, followed by the International Management District Bike Waste Project or the IMD project. Next slide, please. So and. Antoine Drive itself, it's um, it's not the ordinary paving and drainage project or drainage and paving project. This is a huge mega project, which basically uh, goes from US 290 to West Mount Houston. Um, the two portions of this project, uh, which we're going to RFQ for, are those portions from the US 290 to Acorn Drive on the left hand side. And then the, the second one to that is Acorn Drive to Cold Creek. Uh, this particular RFQ, it's only going to if you look at the uh, items on the left hand side are those are the items we expect the consultant to perform and the ones on the right side are the items we expect the consultant not to perform under this contract and the reason for that being is because a lot of what we consider phase one a lot of those activities have been performed already because this is a huge system of projects that uh, time is of the essence so we're trying to maneuver through uh, this this five mile corridor so the consultants on this side on RFQs uh, one and two, the purple and the blue ones, those essentially are going to be two phase contracts. So what we know as phase two and phase three. Um, one of the particulars that you need to be made aware of is that those 
each one of these RFQs will have a bridge component to it, um, particularly over Brickhouse Gully and then Cold Creek. So that is something you want to consider in developing your team. Um, as I mentioned before, we have a general engineering uh, consultant, a GEC, on this contract, which is overseeing the entire corridor. And so part of this RFQ, part of this project, will be the careful coordination through all these projects and all these agencies uh, through the GEC and, of course, through the city team. Um, things that have been performed, like I said, on the right-hand side are, are things that we typically do, the h, &H analysis, the, the TOPO survey, some of the geotechnical stuff. A lot of that's been already completed or in the process of being completed. Um, but uh, when you get on board, your, the expectation is for you to hit the ground running, start designing uh, basically your respective projects, and then those will at some point fall into the construction packages down the road. Um, in general, the funds for this project on the construction side, which is not really relevant to this per se, but they will drop in FY25. So again, we expect the consultants to get on board and, and put pencil and paper and start, start designing away. Next slide, please. Uh, the next slide here, it's another federally funded project, the IMD Bikeways project. Um, this is one, it's it's a it's a interesting project. It's a two mile in length project. It's a it's a 10 foot wide bike trail essentially, uh, but it falls within the Harris County Flood Control District channel. So there's some coordination efforts with them. Um, the right parameter is a Stony Arthur Arthur Stony Park. I apologize. The left side parameter is a uh, South Derry Ashford. Um, it's what you would expect of a of a bike trail with trail signage, markers, landscaping, and amenities. Um, again, we'll be working closely with TechStot and uh, overseeing uh, uh, incorporating some of their design requirements into this project. Uh, but this one's a pretty straightforward project. Thank you, Juan. Next, we have our facilities design and our operational team. Um, they will present some of the projects that are coming up uh, that will be designed from capital projects and also from wastewater and Houston water operations. Um, Marcos, Magesha, uh, I will call you up next. Thank right, you. Thank you, Sharon, for the introduction and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Marcos Magesha from Capital Project. Uh, I am from Facility Delivery Line. We do design and construct uh, water and wastewater facilities. And uh, today, as part of the next, uh, I'll provide the highlight of the you know, next round of RFQ. Uh, the first you know, uh, RFQ uh, I'm going to go over is the four cement rehabilitation and reconstruction design for consent decree. This is one of the early action uh, project that we have as part of the consent decree and this is going to be a city-wide selection that means <coughs> we do not identify the locations for the purpose of RFQ. The locations will be identified once the selection is made. Yes, this is going to be you know, a three-phase design you know, contract and uh, the expectation is you know, the engineer will provide Professional engineering services uh, for the you know uh, force men. Basically, the phase one is going to be assessment of the existing force men, coming up a recommendation how to you know uh, uh, replace in kind, or that includes the type of you know uh, min centimeter or type of installation that's required as part of that project. And the second one is a lift station rehab and reconstruction design. That's a consent decree as well. Uh, this selection in a willing, it includes as a, a professional engineering services for evaluation and recommendation of improvement and associated design for the lift stations. And these are going to be packaged and we are going to have at least two, two selections on this category. And the, this is going to be citywide. So that means you will not see the location of those lift stations during the RFQ. However, once after the selection is made, we will have you know those location identified, and that's going to be a part of the scope review as well. Uh, we will have a three-phase contract for this purpose of the you know uh, this for this package as well. 
The third one is the lift station rehab and reconstruction design consent decree. And this category may include FEMA compliance requirement. We will have you know, uh, two selection for this as well. This is going to be a three phase design services. The only difference between this lift station package and the previous one is one is going to require compliance with the FEMA requirement. That's uh, uh, related to the previously, you know, uh, assessment them for Hurricane Harvey. And the other package we may have is lift station electrical improvement, and this is specifically for uh, electrical component replacement for the lift stations. And this is going to be in you know, a professional engineering services evaluation and recommendation of electrical improvement and associated design. That includes evaluation and design of quick connect system for emergency portable backup, electrical you know, uh, service pole and service transformer, service disconnect, design of quick connect system, manual transfer switch, generator disconnect, and this also includes site ownership verif verification. Uh, the reason for that is some of the lift stations are not currently within the city of Houston name, and that the engineer of record or the team is going to be selected will be tasked to work on you know site ownership verification and any anything related to that as well. And the other category of the you know this round is uh, capacity remedial uh, uh, major plans. Those are you know the second phase of the the next phase of the consent decree uh, selection. And as you guys are aware, the consent decree was signed in 2021, and the some of the compliance requirement we have is early action which we have been working on the early action project for the last uh, two years. And the next phase of the consent decree will be capacity remedial uh, measure plans. Those are under wastewater collection and transmission systems, capacity assessment, and uh, the city, <clears throat> the consent decree identified nine areas. Those nine areas were evaluated by four firms who were you know, hired by the city almost two years ago and uh, the report for the assessment is you know uh, reaching to the final stage as a part of that assessment we did you know uh, in, we did requested the selected firms to perform phase one the reason for that is you know this is you know uh, the the grace period for this you know uh, consent decree is 10 years that means the project will be identified and those projects are going to be executed and is going to be in service with by 2031. And there may be some exceptions. There may be some exceptions currently. The general engineering services, those are the firms who are selected. They are currently working on the phase one as part of the recommendation. They may find a justification to extend the 10 year grace period to 15 year grace period. This is something that's not known at this point, and we expect this project to be completed by 2031. And uh, as part of the capacity remedial measure plans, we do have nine packages, and those packages, you know, the expectation of those packages is the engineer who selected to perform the evaluation of uh, root cause analysis will act as a technical advisor. That means they would do provide uh, technical oversight of that project. They do complete phase one. And the firm who are going to be selected as part of this selection, they do perform phase two detailed design and phase three construction services. That's the service we are looking for as part of the selection. And this selection may require you know, uh, interviews as part of the selection process. That is because uh, these projects are very critical in nature. And uh, the time is an essence and do like to know uh, the prime, the team who are going to be a part of this delivery. And as you know, as part of the contract, 
uh, this is going to be a two phase contract. And, uh, and the expectation is the phase one is going to be completed by the general engineering services who are currently on the contract. And this is going to be a two phase contract. If we see the need to add, you know, a phase one as part of this, if there is any additional you know, assessment is needed, that's something we are going to decide, you know, once after the selection is made. And the other category of this you know, round is wastewater treatment improvements, wastewater treatment plant improvement. This is going to be a citywide selection, and the scope of this selection uh, will be in a professional engineering services, contract, uh, evaluation, and recommendation and of improvement and associated design and construction phase services for wastewater plant improvement. And it's going to be a citywide, and uh, we are going to identify those locations uh, once the selection is made. This selection or this category may not be a consent decree, you know, a, a part of the consent decree. The wastewater plant uh, work order, we have another category, which is you know, wastewater plant improvement, which is called you know, work order. This is going to be an uh, on call contract. We are going to have a three phase on call contract for to provide engineering services for wastewater treatment plant. That's going to be, you know, uh, something you know we are going to include as part of the selection. So other category of this, you know, uh, uh, round is you know staff augmentation. We do have a staff a staff augmentation and project management support for wastewater consent decrees. Uh, one for CAPTA project. That that means. The selected firm will be providing services for projects related to consent decree as a part of the capital project, and uh, the primary location is going to be 611 Walker. And the other category of staff augmentation is professional services, technical support, and staff augmentation for Houston Water. That's going to be the primary location is going to be uh, 4545 Groveway. That's going to be an providing staffing and other needs to operation of the, the facilities. And the other category of staff augmentation is uh, capacity analysis for Houston water planning. This is you know, uh, very specific and uh, this is, you know, uh, we are looking for a professional engineering services to provide the planning support and pre engineering services. That will include providing personnel uh, to provide, you know, uh, technical staff on, you know, planning effort, which includes or familiar to info work, EPA swim, EPA, uh, other, you know, programs which are, you know, uh, used widely for uh, planning purposes. <clears throat> the other category of this round is large diameter, you know, valve re replacement. This is you know, very similar with the one which we had on the last round and uh, the scope of this you know, uh, selection includes professional engineering services for large diameter valve re replacement package, which is going to be citywide. However, the location of this you know, uh, valve replacement package will be identified once after the selection is made. And we are going to use a three phase contract just like others. And uh, we may have a neighborhood system, you know, improvement project as well. Uh, this is something, you know, uh, uh, includes neighborhood, you know, uh, substitute services type of project, and that will include professional engineering services uh, for, you know, phase one, phase two, and uh, phase three, which is limited construction phase services. And this is going to be a citywide as well. And there is one selection which is going to be related to lead and lead and copper rule management. This is going to be for to provide services to Houston water, drinking water operation. Uh, the, you know, the scope of this includes providing professional engineering services to ensure city compliance with EPA revised lead and copper rule. Under the scope of this professional services, the consultant shall evaluate and provide recommendation 
uh, led effort in manage deliverables necessary to meet compliance requirement with dates established by EPA, which is, you know, the delivery schedule for this is going to be October 16, 2024. I assume this is going to be a single phase technical services and, uh, you know, more information is going to be available once, you know, the RFQ is posted. Sharon, you can go to the next slide. All right. Thank you, Marcos. Um, we will have, uh, thank you for the introductory to the planning and the other professional services. Um, we may have some representatives specifically for those later on in this presentation, but thank you so much, Marcos. Um, the next uh, segment of the uh, professional services we have is from for rehabilitation. Um, that includes mostly your transportation drainage and operation team. Um, we have uh, local drainage or and pavement uh, rehab. So um, we'll advance the slide and we'll have representatives to speak on that behalf. Do, um, one of the things we have up is the traffic signal design. Um, we may have someone represented from the traffic area. Okay, um, thank you. If not, uh, those are very typical, uh, what we normally put out as an RFQ. Um, so the, I don't think there's any specific scope on that. Uh, we do have street rehab. Hello? Cheryl, I, I'll jump in. I, I don't, oh, thank you. I don't know who's in here for the team. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Veronica Davis, Director of Transportation and Drainage Operations. Um, as Cheryl has mentioned, uh, many for these work order contracts, um, they are typically what we do put out. Um, for the traffic signal design, um, we have gotten funding from TxDOT, and so we are we need to work very quickly uh, to get a lot of these designs done, particularly as we get ready to go after more um, state and federal funding for our signals. Um, and so a lot of these are new signals that need to be designed, um, intersection improvement, safety, everything's going to come under Vision Zero. Um, and so I do ask that as you all think about some of those is that for both traffic signal design and also intersection safety design, um, making sure that your team has people that can do multimodal intersections. Um, I know that sometimes we run into traffic engineers that are very traditional of moving vehicles, um, but we need to move people who are walking across the street. We have installed many intersections now where we have bike signals, so we need your best multimodal team. Uh, on the street rehab, um, as you all know with this mayor, we have our mayor street rehab initiative. Uh, we have to move very quickly. We try to rehab about 2% of our roads um, every year. And so with this, um, it is just very quick designs. We've done a lot of standard details, um, but just supporting the team on any designs that we need. This may include um, uh, sidewalks um, and other types of improvements uh, that we add on to our street rehabilitation. Um, for bikeway design, um, we work very closely with the planning department. Um, they typically will determine what's the next level of priority. And so for us, it is to then go forward and design. So I urge you to look at some uh, projects that we've recently completed. Lawndale is one. Um, and just look at some of the new ways that we are doing our bikeways with protected uh, bikeways, also allowing for drainage. Uh, we have several others that will be in the queue that we will need assistance, um, some that we are going to be uh, going after uh, federal funding um, in order to complete um, traffic engineering again uh, for that, you know, please bring your best team on the traffic engineering side that can truly do multimodal traffic engineering. And I cannot emphasize that enough. Uh, we have a lot of that's happening at our different intersections. We're working very closely with Metro on their boost program. Um, we're working uh, very closely with the planning department again around Vision Zero. You will hear that a lot. And for those of you that are not aware, it is zero traffic related deaths and fatalities. I urge you to go online and look at the Vision Zero plan to see some of the things that are in there. Um, and lastly is technical support. 
Um, it is just a very general category for all the different things that we need within transportation and drainage operations. Um, that could range from um, very quick design um, to just staff augmentation and supporting the team. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so no much, problem. Veronica. Appreciate that. Um, we'll move on to the next segment. Um, this is our construction management and inspection services. We typically um, have a round of this need um, coming up through the various service lines. Um, so um, there's nothing very specific, but we will go through the list so you can kind of see what those um, CMNI uh, projects that we're anticipating. Um, horizontal wastewater, uh, water plant facilities, water well rehabilitation, paving and drainage on the rehabilitation side, paving and drainage on the reconstruction side, and small diameter water and wastewater reconstruction. Um, the requirements are uh, typical what we normally do with, with our CMNI firms. So just to give you an overview um, of the ones that we will uh, be going out uh, for contracts for. Thank you. The next section is our planning section. Next slide, please. OK, we have uh, two projects that will fall under this category. The first one is the capacity analysis and technical support. I think Marcos kind of touched on this one. Um, do we have anyone um, from planning that want to speak directly to this project coming up? Actor? Yes, uh, Sriel, uh, yeah, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I believe this is the one you are talking about, the uh, single uh, RFQ we are planning to post, right? Yes. And this one, uh, yeah, this will be uh, citywide and it is basically CRMP projects extension, you can say. We have uh, uh, CD uh, projects going on right now, but after uh, this year, uh, we have to have uh, extension of those projects. So this one will cover whole city of Houston. It is basically to find out SSO problem, constraint area problems for citywide, especially collection systems. And it will have, I think, uh, staff augmentations we will need will be helping us through the uh, concept we established already. OK, thank you. So. Thank you, Akhtar. Um, the next project we have in our planning category is design concepts report for street and mobility project. And I have Donald with that will be speaking to this project. All right, thank you, Cheryl, and thanks everybody for coming. Uh, I'm Donald Boako. Uh, I'm with the Multimodal Safety and Design Branch um, of TDO. As Veronica just emphasized, um, we are very interested in multimodal now. Um, so looking at all the modes, uh, the branch used to be either traffic engineering branch or transportation engineering branch, but our new name um, is multimodal safety and design, emphasizing all modes. Um, so the design concept reports, um, what they are is um, we are using that as the first step in the project development process. Uh, you may have known them as uh, pre-engineering reports, uh, we have since um, rebranded them and kind of redesigned them for what they should be. And now we call them design concept reports or DCRs. Uh, so what they are is um, it's a schematic level concept development. Uh, we used to assign some percentage to it. Uh, sometimes you would hear 20%, 30%, but we want to take those percentages off because we know that has another meaning when it comes in the engineering world. So we are just saying they are schematic level concept development. You can think of them in the back of your heads as about 15 to 20% design. But what it is, it's a comprehensive study for the typical corridor or project area. And then what we want the DCRs to do, which replace the PER, is that we want it to ensure that it's more comprehensive, um, especially pulling in current city policies so that emphasize safety, especially with Vision Zero, as Veronica mentioned, also with Resilient Houston and all our um, drainage updates. And we want to make sure that any study we are doing is very comprehensive, um, not even neglecting land use 
and issues of equity as well. So these DCRs, we see them that by the time we have the report, the technical document ready, um, it is such that it has checked all these boxes uh, before it goes into engineering design. Next slide, please. So with that, um, we are asking that you bring a team on board that would include, um, in addition to the um, engineering or, or roadway design team, we should also have some allied professionals such as planners, landscape architects, urban designers, and public engagement experts. We also want people who understand the community, um, local community as well. So um, think of your group as a kind of full service uh, when you are applying for this. And also we want people who understand the city, uh, who really know where the city is headed in terms of current policy, current uh, mindset. Uh, with, with regards to a timeline, uh, we'll just have um, the contract in place and we'll have work orders which will be citywide and uh, will be issued on a multi-year contract. Um, so I'll be around if you have any other questions um, after the fact, I'll be happy to answer. So Cheryl, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and um, our last category we have coming up in our forecast is the professional service category. Next slide. Um, we have the lead and copper rule management. This was spoken, uh, of course, earlier by Marcos, uh, but I do want to give the um, operations team uh, a chance to go ahead and speak to it. The lead and copper rule management, if someone is available to represent. Hi, uh, Cheryl, Venus Price here with Drinking Water Operations. Um, yes, this is a, a posting that we're very excited about. What we're looking for is um, a, a vendor, a consultant that can help us uh, meet the requirements of EPA and TCQ. As the people who are familiar with this topic will know, it is uh, something that's uh, changing. Um, as time goes on, people are, you know, trying to grapple with what all it means. That's it's a, it's a, it's a big, hefty um, uh, scope. And so, uh, being that the city and operations in particular will, were pulled in a lot of directions, so we need a, a vendor that can focus on this task and is uh, very well familiar with the topic, not only um, in the in the state but also nationally and can really lead this effort for us and make sure that we are on top of everything that we need to be on top of um, and looking all at all the documents, at all the history, at all the best practices, at everything we need um, in order to be compliant with this rule. Um, that's about the long and short of it. Thank you so much, Venus. Um, next on the professional service side, we have uh, Grant Consulting Services. And uh, Veronica, will you be speaking to this as well? Next slide. I think Catherine Summerlin Catherine. is on. Yes. I can certainly speak to that, Cheryl. Thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this opportunity helps support the needs that Veronica Davis and Donald Buaku mentioned earlier. Uh, the city of Houston intends to increase its capacity to manage the large number of grant opportunities offered by the bipartisan infrastructure law and other state funding opportunities to help deliver much needed projects around the city. These projects range uh, everywhere from multimodal surface transportation to stormwater uh, mitigation projects, and we're looking for a full service consulting firm to provide uh, much needed project support. Uh, a few of these responsibilities uh, range from multimodal safety and design to transportation planning, traffic and economic analysis, benefit cost analysis, and in particular, assessing environmental justice and equitable community development conditions. Uh, we will require someone with a good knowledge of uh, various uh, environmental justice communities, marginalized communities, but also the ability to work uh, seamlessly throughout our uh, variety of environments with internal and external stakeholders, people from uh, Metro, our uh, uh, planners within the city's planning department to uh, folks at TxDOT. Um, this will be an RFQ proposal based contract with a two step process with evaluation plus an interview. 
So we look forward to receiving and evaluating your proposals. Thank you. Next slide, please. Um, next, uh, we have our professional materials, engineering laboratory services, and this is primarily due to our, uh, that will be a part of our CDBG, our Community Development Block Grant funded MIT projects. Um, I have Mike Pruszynski. Uh, you want to speak to to this uh, potential project, please? Uh, sure. Thank you, Cheryl, for introduction and good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Mike Pruszynski, and I'm managing engineer with Technical Support Services. Uh, as you know, material testing is required for all Houston Public Works projects, and uh, there is a need, you know, to ensure the quality of the project construction and compliance with project specification. However, we have a specific requirement for testing labs to obtain <laughs> contracts uh, from Houston Public Works. Uh, one is they must have active accreditation uh, with the American Association for Laboratory Accreditation, A2LA. Two, they must have full-time experienced technician certified by agencies approved by uh, Houston Public Works. And three, the testing laboratories must be managed by full-time professional engineer registered in the state of Texas. We might, we might have uh, uh, testing labs in the audience. We just want to clear something up. Uh, there is a good chance that uh, they might have already a uh, contract with us. However, the language in the current contract does not satisfy the federal procurement uh, requirement. And that's why we are going through this RFQ process. That's all I got. Thank you. OK, thank you so much. Next slide. I would like to um, make sure that everyone is familiar with our vendor portal. Uh, if your firm is not registered, please register your firm uh, to receive all of the email notifications, um, RFQ notifications, and any other information we have. Um, based on professional service selections. Um, there is one registration per firm. However, if you have multiple users that would like to receive notifications, you can um, sign up on the subscribe button. So I would definitely recommend either registering. Uh, if you haven't done so, look at your uh, registration, make sure everything is up to date. You can edit it. And then all those uh, who want to receive notifications can sign up for the subscribe. Um, the vendor portal link um, is everywhere, but um, Houston Public Work Contracting Services as well. Next page. All right, so that concludes our forecast meeting. Um, we appreciate you spending your afternoon with us and hearing about all of the exciting projects that the city um, have up and coming. And uh, we look forward to uh, Seeing you again when RFQs come out and um, good luck on that information. So we'll move right into our question and answering period. <laughs> this is a way where you guys can ask the questions. I know we kind of gave you general uh, overview information. Um, if there's anything specific, specific, please um, wait for the RFQs to come out. Um, but we do want to address any general questions that you may have at this time based on the material that was presented. How do you ask your question? You select a Q&A on the right side of the screen. You type in your question in the compose box and then select send. If you want to ask your question anonymously, you can also do that as well. Because there were multiple projects presented in this presentation, we're asking that you please provide that project name so the appropriate person can respond. And with that, I will introduce our moderator, Tashmi Love. Uh, Tashmi? Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Okay, our first question is, can we get a recording of this presentation? Um, the recording and presentation will be posted on the vendor portal for everyone after the meeting. The second question is, will there be any technical analysis included in the grant consulting services RFQ? That question is for, for Veronica Catherine? Or, or Catherine. Uh, mm -hmm. I can certainly answer that. Yes, um, we are looking at someone who can 
uh, inform us with regard to um, completing budget information, technical analyses, narrative development, and additional backup uh, documentation with each grant. Okay, next question. When does the City of Houston plan to release the Antoine Drive project RFQ? Um, I can answer yeah. that. Um, the RFQs we anticipate coming in at the end of October was slated for October 21, um, but plus or minus um, some days. But by the end of October is when we plan on releasing all of the RFQs that were presented in this meeting. Thank you, Cheryl. Next question. For Antron Drive, does the City of Houston plan on releasing an RFQ for other projects? So those three other projects are already under contract. Thank you, Juan. Next question. Where can we find more information on any work previously done on the International Management District bikeways? Juan, can you speak to that question? Um, I can. I'm not too sure if we've actually had that uploaded on the Engage Houston portal, but uh, that's where we would upload a lot of that information. Thank you, Juan. Do you have a time frame as when the traffic signal design slash traffic engineering? Oh, we already answered that question. Sorry. Yes. That, yeah. that, uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, most of the projects that were presented here will be released, um, what we call our first round RFQs, and we anticipate that coming out at the end of October. Thank you. Make sure you're registered on the vendor portal so that you can receive notification when that comes out. OK, next question. It was discussed that the grant consulting contract would be an evaluation interview. Are there any other RFQs upcoming that will have a shortlist interview process? Uh, I'm sure there will be. Um, that will also be noted on the actual RFQs. Um, so please uh, make sure you read that. Um, also, I do want to know information on the RFQs. Uh, we talked about federally funded projects, some um, related to um, community development block grant. Um, there is specific language um, that will be part of the RFQ, also for FEMA. So uh, please note that some of these RFQs uh, will have additional requirements and guidelines based on the funding requirements. So it, please make sure you review all of the RFQs and, and the uh, guidelines accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Are joint ventures possible for proposals? I, I would say uh, we're, we don't restrict if there's a joint venture. Um, you still have to submit your SOQ, um, just like if you were just a single firm presenting with the team. Okay, next question. This is Chris from Braun Intertech. He said, "Who would, whom should we contact about the lead and copper rule requirement?" Uh, Venus, is that a federal um, something federal that they can refer to, or you? I wasn't sure if they're talking about internal or are they just in general the federal requirements? Could you clarify? We'll make sure we get someone um, to answer that question um, on if you need something specific on that information that is the federal requirement and what the city's initiatives are. So we'll make sure that we provide that information to you. Thank you. Next question. OK. How many consultants will be selected for the street rehab RFQ? This this is Michael already. I, these typically are announced on the advertisement, but depending on the funding availability, we could increase it. Uh, so uh, we really don't know at this point exactly because you know sometimes you may get other funding like we have done for SWAT, uh, just a 
the last solicitation. So really, we don't know yet until we start even reviewing, we could change it to more than one. But at a minimum, you can count on one. It could be more. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, grant management, will grant assistance be targeted at the WW projects? I believe this question's for Catherine. Uh, so I assume WW is wastewater? Yes. OK, um, if there are opportunities on the federal and state level, I would yes, I would think that we were looking at that as well. Thank you. Do yeah, we, we've updated the uh, Houston Pub, uh, HPW 100 uh, list. Um, Tashmi, when was that um, the date of that update? Uh, we updated it this month. I think October, maybe late September. Typically what we do is we try to update it um, after or shortly after or before um, RFQs come out. So um, the latest is updated and on the portal uh, October of this year. Thank you. Um, I think that this do this. Does the city plan to anticipate the DCR work order cover individual project sites, longer corridors, or other scales? Yes, um, this is Donald. Yes, all of the above. Um, just depending on the project, the scale could vary. So everything you listed um, could be possible on a work order. Thank you. Will we be eligible for consideration for the material testing after submitting qualification through the vendor portal? Um, I, I guess I wasn't really sure. If there is in the Houston Public Works um, material testing HPW 100. Um, you, you can apply for this RFQ, even if you have an existing um, contract with the city yeah. for the other program. Let me let me make it a little bit clearer. There mm -hmm. there is a rotating you know a list of registration for geotechnical and environmental services. That is separate from this solicitation. This solicitation is going to pick based on qualifications for a specific funding source, which is the CDBG. So yes, there should be. Uh, as SOQ submitted for this to be reviewed and selected based on qualification. Thank you, Michael, for the clarification. Okay, next question. For the traffic demand modeling category listed on the HPW information guide, do you envision working with the travel demand models maintained by the city's planning department transportation group slash HGAC? Um, so this is Veronica. I don't think that we anticipate any modeling uh, specifically, um, but anytime we do need modeling, we do work very closely with HGAC for that model. Um, a lot of what we're looking at um, is going to be for the traffic engineering is largely going to be intersections um, or anything related to safety um, and balancing that with mobility. Um, so there may be some modeling in that. And so again, I emphasize, I can't emphasize enough to make sure you have people that really know how to do multimodal models. Thank you, Veronica. Next question. In prior years, prime and small businesses subconsultants use HPW's contract connect event for networking in advance of the RFQs. When will this event happen? Um, the contract connect, um, they are advertising the date has been set. I'm not, I don't have that right offhand, but that, that event will be happening, I think, in November. Okay, next question. Thank you, Cheryl. How many consultants will be selected for the large diameter waterline design project? I believe. Marcos, can you answer this question? Probably one. 
Yes, it's okay. going to be one at this time. Thank you. Next question. When will the city? We've answered that question. Sorry. Is there any DBE requirements? If so, what is the percentage? Um, the percentage um, will vary based on the contract type. Um, all of that information will be available to you on the actual RFQs as to what those um, participation requirements are. So please make sure when the RFQ comes out um, that you adhere to those terms and guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, just to give a little bit more, the rehabilitation type of design would be 29% is that the category. The goal that's set is 29. For a professional engineering service is 26. That and is correct. for construction and inspection, it's 24%. And also the city now can take credit, the prime can take credit for half of those root goals. Uh, so if it is a 26% requirement, if a MWB certified prime applies, then 13% can't be absorbed by the prime. Michael, this is Mike Pazeski. This materials testing falls under 24% too, right? Yes. I would. All right, thanks. Now keep in mind that's the MWBE. Um, I know the question said DBE, and I know uh, so just wanted True. to make that clarification as well. Thank you. That is absolutely important differentiation. The city of Houston has its own MWBE program. Thank you. Next question. This is for Marcos. Can you give a few examples of which Hurricane Harvey related wastewater treatment plant projects will be dealt with under the CRMP project described? All right. Thank you. So the CRMP uh, is a solution that's provided for nine areas which are identified on the consent decree. And those nine areas include some of the treatment you know, plants we have you know, throughout the city. And this solution may include one or two of the facilities that we have. Uh, I, you know, recommend you know the proposers to review those particular RFQs and determine accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Marcos. If the RFQs are advertised by the end of October, will the due date be just before Thanksgiving? That is absolutely the goal. That's the rush uh, that we are doing this. So this first round can be finished before the Thanksgiving break. Uh, but if the consensus is to change it to, you know, we'll issue it on Thanksgiving break and make it due on Christmas Day, that's all right too. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. We're hoping Thank that you. this forecast meeting will be able to um, at least give you an idea and uh, of the requirements and some of the forecasted RFQs that we have coming up. Thank you, Cheryl. Next question. Are the MWBE requirements the same as the past? If a prime is an MWBE firm is required to meet the requirements? I think they're just asking if it's the same. OK, um, I guess if to say what Michael stated, um, if you're talking about if you're uh, if, if you are a certified city MWBE firm, um, you will be able to um, have up to 50 percent of the goal uh, self performed. So um, that's the only change um, that has taken place other than the categorical goals in which um, Michael just stated. Um, for the uh, rehabilitation projects and the standard and uh, CMNI. So those are, uh, those been in effect for about a year now. So the last round of RFQs did reflect that change. Uh, we don't anticipate any changes moving forward other than the 50% uh, self performance um, that also is in play. Thank you. If there's any other clarification about that, please uh, put it in the chat. Thank you, Cheryl. Next question on C 
our MP projects can current MWBE consultants apply for the next round? I'm not sure if you're referring to when you start to say MWBE, every, anyone can apply for um, any of the, submit an SOQ for any of the projects out there in the RFQ. Uh, so I, I'm not really sure unless you want to put more clarification as to what you're requesting in that light. Um, that's the response. Thank you, Cheryl. Next question. Will the recommendations for from the CRMP report be made available? All right, this is Marcus again, and we are currently you know, working on the CRMP packages and still you know, not finalized. And this is uh, privileged and confidential and is submitted to EPA. And my answer is it will not be available for public. Thank you, Marcos. Next question, what other ITS application may be required for the city's multimodal design projects? Uh, so, some of the things that have been considered for multimodal is TSP, the transit uh, priority signal timing and things like that. So uh, it really uh, the, the city of Houston right now, when you look at ITS features, you, you can go look at the HITS program, which is the Houston ITS, uh, the Houston um, Intelligent Transportation System. They got, you know, uh, permanent count stations. They have changeable message signs that are all on arterials now. Um, and also intersection counts and uh, cameras and things like that. So uh, a, a lot of those things, the, the transportation and drainage operation group is, uh, is implementing and coming up into line into the system of management of all the intelligent transportation systems. So uh, what I would say is stick with those and uh, um, even for multimodal purposes, is is really how we are partnering with our partner agencies on the things that they need within our, our right away. Thank you. Michael, next question, grant management. If you are on the winning team for the grant management, are you precluded from the, doing design work for a given project if the grant funding is secured? The answer is no. This, this is strictly grant writing kind of uh, procurement. So uh, if, if you go into the design, then uh, um, I don't think it's fair to say that grant writing procurement can preclude a specific firm from design opportunities or subbing for that matter. That was the last question in the queue. All right, um, last chance to ask the question. Oh, we have one more. Uh-oh. Can existing consultants work on CRMP projects are allowed to compete on phase two? What about sub consultants who worked on current projects? Can they compete as a sub and prime for phase two? All right, thank you. So, Michael, I think uh, you can answer that question. Uh, I have had a discussion with Cheryl, so that's something you know uh, you can weigh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay. The the prime contractors that are going to serve as a technical advisor on these projects, uh, more than likely, I actually no. I, I don't think that's wise. Uh, but if you are a sub, we are still going through the discussion on those teams. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll make that decision in a few before we procure it, before we advertise it, I should say. Uh, 
OK, next question. Um, how many of the upcoming projects for geotechnical firms can apply individually? This uh, for this particular. Um, there is no uh, I'm assuming are we talking about are you limiting if you're geotechnical firm per how many teams you can sub on? I know that some time ago we did have that uh, rule, but um, if you there is no restriction on as far as a geotechnical firm on how many RFQs they can submit on that that rule is no longer. Um, we no longer have that rule in play, so uh, there is no restriction on that. I, I'm assuming that was the question. That, that's correct, Cheryl. There is okay. no limitation. You can have as much uh, opportunities as you can. Yes. But just remember, this particular geotechnical solicitation is a just a one-time selection, just to have it for the funding source. That's that's what it is. And most of our projects will be handled by the system of current of registration of 20, what are 20 some firms that we go around. Next question on the traffic signal design project, any estimate on how many signals or intersections? Typically, these contracts, they, they handle up to 10, to 15, I believe. And sometimes it might be even five, depending on the funding availability <laughs> and uh, what the budget will be initially. So it, it is a wide range. You really can't put a number on it because the way they are structured is that as the need comes, we can leverage what contract capacity we got immediately. Thank you, Michael. Next question. How many consultants are expected for the traffic signal design projects, the intersection safety improvement and sidewalk? I would assume one for now, but we have always selected more when we have different funding source. So, so I assume for one right now, but it could increase. That information would definitely be part of the RFQ. Uh, so once the RFQ is released, uh, it will indicate the number of selection for that RFQ, specifically for the ones you're requiring about. Thank you. OK, that was the last question that we have in the queue right now. OK, um, I don't see any more questions and um it's about 208 right now uh, is there any closing remarks you would like to to have michael um, we can advance the slide if no really thank you for the interest and uh look forward to have another great round of selections yes. and uh, uh we'll do our part to to make it as a good experience as possible for you all. So thank you. Thank you. Have a good afternoon, everyone.